Welcome to buy, hold, sell, or wait. It's George from Fantasy Take TV. So I have a whole bunch of players here and pretty much the video series will be go over, I don't know, 20 or 15 to 20 players and state um, a brief case on them on whether I would buy, hold, sell, or wait on them. Or like a small argument, a brief case, not an actual brief case, but you know what I mean. So that should be good. Um, obviously, early in the week, if you watch the channel, I've been bit of a drama queen over the dummy spitting over Laird captaincy um, is what it is but I guess that's what you deserve for overpaying for a player in modern fantasy is what it is though but um, yeah calm down today had a kebab while listening to Craig David music in the car which made me very happy that was very relaxing for me um, I do love Craig David seven days is a very nice song but We'll move on to our fancy or super coach players that will go. And we'll start in the defender line. So number one I have is James Sicily. I would, if you don't have him, I know he looks really good, but I would still wait. I think we're going to see a few massive scores for him. He was my D1 going into the season. He's, that hasn't changed as in, in my ranks. Um, but I think we have value available and I would go that route, save the 100K, use that elsewhere, get a better mid price or, or whatever. So we'll go over to the 500k players. We'll add in Ed Richards too. So Hayden Young. I'll be honest, I don't have a good read on Hayden Young. Um, I'm not quite sure what that what goes on in that defense. And I looked at the kicker numbers. Obviously, they played the Saints defense. And I looked at the kicker numbers, and it was fairly spread out across four players. Uh, I think there was six or eight, and Young got two of them. I wanted to see a bit more than that, but he looks... He looks good for me. He's a weight, but I don't have a great read on Young. So if you do have a good read on him and you're confident in him, I think you can buy. But for me, he's weight. Just want to see a different matchup. Nick Dacos for me is a buy. Um, I know that we had concerns going to the preseason, but his uh, his work rate is disgusting. The way he plays is disgusting. He didn't even get that many kick-ins, and he will get those kick-ins. And we're seeing Penderbury used high up the ground, so I think that works in Dacos's favour. Grab a, for me. I want to secure a 500k keeper. I'll ride the downs. I have no problem because I think he's got a few. He has a few monsters in him. Is in monster scores. Dacos for me is a buy, and he's the one I'm bringing in this week. Jordan Ridley, I think, is a solid option. I think he's a buy as well. No Hind, no Ambrosio. So it's basically basically the three main distributors down back there, and they're using Ridley to his strengths again. And I thought Ridley saw no bowl in the bat in the fourth quarter, so I think he could have been a much better score. I think he's probably your D6 range, so you're probably locking in your D6 here. So I don't think you have to go for him, but um, I think he's a buy if you have him, if you if you want him. But uh, if you prefer others, you know, or you don't want Ridley, I think that's fine. I just think he's he is value, and he'll be around that D. I think in my ranks he was D8, and I think that's probably where he'll end up. But at least he's freed up this year. Ed Richards is, a, if you have him, you hold, but I don't think you buy. Just because I would have picked Ed Richards if they moved, uh, what's his name, Daniel up the ground. Um, maybe I should have said added fade into this segment, but yeah, basically I wouldn't be buying Ed Richards because yeah, the Daniel experiment in the midfield failed as I thought that was obvious when I when watching his midfield craft in the preseason games so on the first preseason intra club so for that reason I think Ed Richards will average more than Dale it seems because that's what happened last year when he when he or in the last two months or so I just wonder what the kick-in split will be week to week because I know they like Daniel on the kick-ins so um Richards had an absolute blinder I thought and still didn't crack 110 so I don't have enough confidence in Ed Richards. If there was no Daniel back there, I would have a lot of confidence in Ed Richards, but I think that's just annoying. So I wouldn't buy him, wouldn't sell him though. Um, Jones, Liam Jones. Um, what's this thing called? Buy, hold, sell, or wait? I might have to re refix that so I can answer everything properly. Anyway, Liam Jones. For me, he is a uh, he's a sell. 
if you have, I think you can hold him if you have other issues going on. But for me, I've got Josh Kelly. It's going to restructure, get a midfield mid pricer. A lot of them look quite good at the moment. I think he can still do. He's done seven in the past, so he should do seventeen. We saw that in the preseason game. I saw Bruce going for a lot of intercepts, not so much Jones. I'm t- I'm too nervous to field Liam Jones. I think he'll have a good score this week against the short St Kilda forward line, but it does stress me out fielding him because of the floor is so low. Um, you can hold if you want. I won't begrudge you if you sell him. I'm selling him and. Also, the fact that he's in non-contact training this week, he's trying to get up. Does that pinch nerve reoccur? Um, I'm just making excuses to get rid of him, to be honest. I think you can hold if you want, um, but I think you can sell. So it's a hold or sell. It depends on what you want to do. But really, there's from what we saw in the preseason, he should be putting up 60 to 70. So, But for me, for 230K, I can see much better opportunities and opportunity to restructure with Josh Kelly. So I'm selling, but you can hold if you like. But it just makes me very nervous fielding him. I do expect him to have a good one this week. But going forward, very nervous. So that's why I'm selling. Liam Stocker. I think I wouldn't go Jonas to Stocker. Um, Stocker's role was a little bit better, and I probably don't have the best read on him, but... His rating for like champion data was incredibly low, so I don't know if he's actually that effective of a player. Honestly, don't have a good read on Stocker, to be honest, so I'll probably abstain. And then Tom Cole, I would be passing on Tom Cole. I don't see the point. If you started him, great. Do West Coast continue this chip mark style that they said they wouldn't do in the preseason? I'm not too sure. I think you're going to get... I think last year Tom Cole's first game was like a ton and then he dropped a whole bunch of 30s and 50s. I don't feel... I don't, I'm not confident enough in Tom Cole to put up numbers every week. He's a pass for me. Conor McKenna, the last one, if you don't have him, you must get him and get him this week if you can. He's going to make a lot of money and I think he has done 80 in the last time he was at halfback. I think he'll go close to that again. He looked unbelievable. He was just about their best player. Still only 26 as well, so he is a buy. Midfield, number one at the top of the list is Rory Laird. Rory Laird, I can barely say that. Lairdy. Um Probably a bit harsh on Lady this week. Um, just didn't expect him to have a bad game, but he's human after all. These guys are like you or me. They're not... Obviously, they're professional athletes, but they're not... Um, you know, humans can have off days. It's just how it is. Lead is a hold. Do not sell lead. This is the reason why I don't think you sell lead. And I've thought about selling him in fantasy, and it does open up some nice opportunities. But we picked lead because we thought he was going to average a lot and be the M1 for the year. So the P- we've already locked in this 50 crap score. So if we sell him now, well, we've just given up so much points in a trade to the rest of the competition we need a back lead in and hopefully lead is the one to help us you know obviously the people that have led aren't well ranked probably right now so the now that we have led we need lead to help us get back up the ranks because people at the top they don't have lead so we're just joining them and and banking a loss by selling him even if you can like i guess some people want to sell because they can get like a cogs and then a rookie that they missed and then another keeper as well so i guess if you can get two keepers out of him i think it's okay to sell because you're actually advancing the team you're getting two keepers but if you're not getting an extra keeper i would not be selling lead there's every like this the writing is on the wall here he's got to bounce back he had the great preseason he put up that massive score against west coast where they benched him early as well so or his time on ground was low anyway but um there's a, you can make the case for Rochelle and Rankin. Are they affecting him through the middle wall? They're going to be low CBAs anyway, so I don't think it matters too much. you got to back Laird in here. Don't sell him. Um, you got to back him in. Yeah, he, he's the one that can help us get back up the ranks now if he can start putting up some scores like he did last year. If he doesn't, it is what it is, but I guess we, we've committed to this. We committed at the start of the year. Why jump off now? I'm holding Laird. Jack McRae, a little slight concerns, I guess, with him. Didn't look like the old Jack McRae. Looked like the back half of last year, Jack McRae. Not a buy, not a sell. Hold. 
Um, he should be still good enough to put numbers close enough to top eight. Josh Kelly is a sell with a concussion. I guess you can see what if you have Ollie Hollands, he plays here. Maybe you have somebody else. I don't know which are mid rookies. JWS play last, so maybe you can loop a bench rookie first, see if you can actually hold him. But you know he could be one weeks, could be two weeks. We're not too sure, but signs are good at the moment. They said I would sell because there's a lot of good opportunities out there. Um, if you don't have Tom Green, you got to get him. Jelly to Green is pretty easy trade, or you can grab a day cost via TPP, which is what I'm doing. So I think he's a sell because you want points on the field now, but. It's just a shame he misses this matchup. So, you know, you could hold if you want. I, I'm I'm selling, though, just in case it's two weeks. If it's two weeks and you hold at this point of the year, it's very bad. Tom Green is a buy. Is he a must-have? Um, I think so. This looks really good, and he's put up these scores earlier last year. So Tom Green is a buy. Setterfield is a wait. What was a buy, hold, sell, wait? Uh, Setterfield is wait for me. This is hard to read. So in 2020, I tweeted this last year. He did 98 when off around 50% CBAs when he was in the midfield. 98 or 50%. Well, they've just given him 70 something percent. I don't know the exact number, but 70 something percent. He's gone 122 dream team or fantasy, and he had only three contested possessions. I honestly didn't pay enough attention to this game in the second half because I was too preoccupied with watching Ridley and Warple. I think it's just a wait, but the CBAs and the history and the role sounds like it's very good. Um, a lot of uncontested marks. I don't think that's going to be all that common throughout the year. And he did perform quite well in the midfield in the preseason game against, I think it was Melbourne. But that was the game, no, was it? St. Kilda, St. Kilda, because Bytel went to Parish, I think, and Parish and Shield did nothing. I think it was that game. I think he's just a wait and see. I'm, I'm still skeptical on this pick, but the CBAs are a massive tick, and if you own Setterfield, you'd be very happy. So I think he's just a wait one a week just to get another read on the pick. Next pick is Jacob Hopper. I think hold for one more week. I am very, very, I have zero confidence in this pick at the moment just because he failed the eye test. He hasn't passed the eye test for over a year. And it doesn't seem like he's fully over. Like they managed him in preseason for a reason and it seems we're kind of seeing that why. Now, will he be better for the run? You hope so. Easier match up this round against the Crows whose midfield really, really lowered their colours. I'm holding this week, but... Another, if he part, if he scores well and he fails the eye test, I'm selling next week. So hold for this week. Hope he comes good. I doubt it. He's going to get massive CBAs, so that should be okay. Um, so yeah, he is a hold for me. Certainly not a buy if you don't have him. James Warple is a buy. Get him in. So he looks fantastic. Led the CBAs back to his best was the PR from the club. Um... One of the hardest workers at the club was the PR. So I backed him in. Obviously, some I backed in like a Bruin. Didn't really work. But this one I, I was pretty pushing for on in the Discord and paid off. So I thought he looked really good. I guess the problem is Hawthorne are no good. So they're not going to get much of the super coach pie. So regardless, high CBA role, back to his best, pass the eye test twice in a row. Even even the first practice game, I thought he looked good, just his kicking was very bad. A tick for Warple, and I think he's in their plans for this year, it seems. So maybe the CBAs drop if they give a bit more to the younger guys, like maybe Connor McDonald goes in there at some point, maybe Josh Ward gets more, but they like Warple in there at the moment, and he's the one that's winning all the contested bowl. So I think he'll put up some massive ones this year, to be honest, and he won't be too far off the top um, the top mids before they start to get going when when uh, winter comes like your Jack Steele and, and whatnot I think so uh, I would be getting Warple in Finn Callahan I've got as a buy and this is a hard one because he's playing wing but I think against West Coast this week with this 100 in his what's his break even my computer is lagging 
negative 12. So he, he's going to make a fair bit of money. Um, I don't think you have to have him, but I think this, what gives me confidence in Finn Callahan is they use him a lot. They look for him. He hunts the ball. And in the preseason, they said he dominated. In the practice game, where Tom Green had 50 touches and they were doing, um, they were interviewing the players and like at halftime, who was best on? They, they were saying Finn over Green and I think Green was in the top three. And then we saw him in the practice game. He rested for the fourth quarter. He put up, he kicked two goals, but I think he's got a 110 off three quarters. He had a bit of a, he got a bit lucky that game. Um, and then this game here, well, they've, they're questioning whether to give him some inside mid-time this week. And no Kelly, no Perryman. I think Ward will go in there and maybe like a rookie. Like maybe Roast, and I think it is was good in the VFL. Not VFL. I don't even think they played VFL. I can't remember. I, I don't even know. But apparently he was played well in whatever game he played. So I think he's a buy because of the price. So I think you can get him in if you want. Um, I don't, th don't think you have to have him because I think there will be some bad scores in here being on the wing. It's just a very hard one to read because of the role. It's, it's hard to make sense. But looking at him, he's he's racked it up basically all three preseason. He racked up in the practice games and he racked it up again. But probably more so when Kelly went out in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he'll make money. He'll make 150k for sure. So I think you can buy him. Um, in the rucks, I don't have anyone here. I guess Cherry is a sell. If I had Cherry, I would be going to Sean Darcy or Jared Witts. I guess with Tom, with uh, Tim English. The issue with Tim English was if we would have started Tim, Tim um, we would have started Tim English if we knew he had, he had a full preseason, which he did not. Maybe if you're okay with him not having a full preseason, then I, or by all means bring in Tim English. But for me, I didn't start him for a reason. I prefer Wits and Darcy over Gorn and English who had interrupted preseasons. I'll take the uninterrupted preseason for mine. So I think take your pick for those two if you have Cherry. Forwards, Cogs is definitely a buy. There was a tweet by Frico this week, I think, or someone else. It looks like no... Good relevant players are on track for forward DPP just yet, but I guess that can definitely change over the weeks. And yeah, Cogs is going to be top six regardless, probably ahead of the f a few other boys that we have. I think he's probably ahead of Rosie and Taranto, given that they can have bad disposal games. I think Cogs has got the highest ceiling. Although Rosie does have a massive ceiling with more CBAs, so it's probably not much in it, but I think you'd be very happy with Cogs, and I think you can get him in if you can. I'm not going to break up my team to get him in though, but I would wish I did have him. Uh, Golden, they said he is a bit of a sore calf, but he was fine, so probably that's fine. Um, tick off Golden because he's still value, and I think he's top six, so I think you can pick him. The next player I have is Ben Cunnington. He's a sell, bit of forward time, old. Um, just sell him, just sell him. Sell, so not top six. Grab another opportunity. Um, Horn Francis is a buy or or uh, wait, I think. The problem with Horn Francis is I don't know if he's ready, given his age, to be consistent yet. The good news is the role will hold. He'll kill the showdown in round three, you'd think. And I thought like a lot went his way, but at the same time, he made his own luck in this practice game. Just watching him play in the second half, it was just... Exiting the forward half a stoppage, kicking massive, like long kicks inside 50, hitting Dixon on the chest. It was just some of the most absurd football I've seen. And uh, you can see why all those clubs were giving up two years worth of draft picks just for this guy. And holy crap, that was, um, that was breathtaking from him. So there'll be a few games of that, but there will also be a few games where things don't go his way. I'm almost certain to bring him in next week, I think, if not this week. I just think he's just a phenomenal player. And um, yeah, I guess the questions still remain. But at least we know, again, on his like, yeah, a little bit of a limited preseason. Does he run out of steam because he's still really young? But, you know, you can also make the case, you know, he's happier now. Um, CBA role is going to hold 65%. We think it will be. 
look, I, I think you wait in a perfect world. Just want to get a second look. But without a doubt, I think this is very, very real. And I think he's probably, yeah, probably a wait, but uh, make some plans for next week because there's a decent chance he will be a buy next week. But buy if you're really confident. Preferably wait to be on conservative. And um, yeah, make sure you have a plan in your mind to get him in next week, I think. He could be a keeper forward. Zeeble, I have Zeeble as a weight, so I know the role is there and the kick-ins are very, very good, which will give me confidence. Just want to see it against another team because it's a new system. No pressure, like West Coast, no pressure at all. Cheezle, Elmac, Zeeble did whatever they want. This week they play Frio, who hog the ball in defense. So it's probably not the best matchup, I guess, for Zeeble this week, so... I think, yeah, I still feel pretty confident Z will, will do well. I'm looking at him for fantasy. Um, but he's a bit more expensive in this format. So I think he probably wait. I'm not going to be very helpful here because I think a lot of these guys are weights. Um, but yeah, I, I think you can bring him in if you want. But I prefer, a bit like Juan Francis, just want one more week of data and your new system now. And that's a wait. Nat Fife is a sell. Get him out now. 300k for a key position player. I, I, he can bounce back this week, but I can't. You can't trust a 32 year old where you're not even sure that he's going to um, succeed in this role. Um, look, he tried hard, took a few marks, but just things. There wasn't a, a lot of supply, but didn't look great at times as well. So. Fife is a sell. You don't want to sweat on a key forward. He's not a top six. He could go down in money. Just get rid of him. Pick someone with a better role. Tanner Bruin. You can sell Tanner if you want. It's a sell or a hold. The reason why is I'm looking at... Again, I've said this multiple times, but with Tanner, he needs to play at stoppages to score. And I look at their their lineup that's come out tonight and there's Bose is in their sub is a, is a midfielder who can play elsewhere though. They got Guthrie, they got Atkins. They can use blitz subs at CBAs. There's another two names that I can't remember. Puff, it's not in, but Bose is in and they've already said they're going to use Bose on the CBAs. If they, the problem with Bruin is that there are better, safer options and there's just so many question marks on the time on ground, the role, um, could he even be sub? The only reason why he'd be sub is if he gets gassed out because he's far too good of a midfielder for them to sub him off. They need him in the midfield. But honestly, I have zero trust in Chris Scott. But yeah, we spoke a bit more in depth about this on the podcast. I wouldn't be upset if you sold because I honestly don't trust this time on ground or the role um, for the majority of the game. I'm going to hold this week, I think. If he lines up on the wing in the first center bounce, I'll probably trade him to Horn Francis. Um, but if he starts in the middle, I'll hold. Which is just a pretty dodgy way to put it. But there's just so many midfielders in there and they need him to play elsewhere to give all these other guys a go in the midfield. But, you know, if you're the coach, I think you, you want him in the midfield. So he is, I think you can sell if you want. But I think he can also hold because he's good enough if things go his way. It's just this, a lot of stuff that point that cannot go his way. So he is, I, I wouldn't begrudge you for selling, but I wouldn't begrudge you for holding. That's what I think you can, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset if you sold and he did well. There's enough red flags here to, to jump on another opportunity. Flanders, I think is a, a hold or sell. I think he'll make money, but I think there's better opportunities out there. If you don't have Sheasel, Flanders straight to Sheasel, get it done. Would I do Flanders to Callahan? Probably not. I'm not sure that's worth a trade. Um, he's expendable, but only if you don't have other pressing issues. I think get rid of him. If not, um, you can hold. Um, but yeah, I'll be honest. I saw the fourth quarter. I thought he played quite well, but he did nothing in the first three quarters. But he did get 30 touches in the preseason game. Was he more high half forward? Was he more wing? I'm not too sure. Um, sell him if you want, because the role is not good anyway. She's all buy, must have. So that's it for this episode. In terms of my trade plans, I th think we're doing... Oops. What have we got here? We are selling Liam Jones, and we are selling Josh Kelly. 
Jones might not even play. He's subject to fitness tests. We're bringing in Callahan. I, I like Juan Francis and Zebul and Setterfield. I want one more week of data, and I'll bring in one, if not two of them tomorrow. Uh, next week, rather. And I'm going to grab Dacos because I want to keep her for 500k, and I want to enjoy watching him play. So... I've brought in Dacos. Things will go badly for Dacos sometimes. Just ride it. The good times will come. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. So I think that's how we'll line up. I have the money to boost Horn Francis to... I mean, Bruin to Horn Francis. So I'm thinking about that. But I'll probably hold. Um, but yeah, I think the plan for next week is... So these two trades probably locked in. And then next week we'll look at... All going well, of course. Things can change. Uh, Chessa out. I don't care if Chessa does well. I don't like him as a player. Um, in terms of... I, I, not that I don't like him. I don't have confidence in him as a player to score well for us from the eye. So I want Chessa out for Chandler. I want... Um, I'll look at Bruin and Hopper again. And I'll look at... Switching them to Zebel, Juan Francis, Setterfield, and we'll assess from there. And then we'll just hopefully leave the team as is. Maybe Constable gets dropped. I think I'll field Wilmot for two, three, three weeks before we can field these blokes down back, or Chiso at least. And that's the plan for the next few weeks. What I would do is within the next two weeks, I would try and save one boost because boosts are good for doing your two down one up or one up two downs in a few weeks you can help get the players you want with the extra trade um or grab two rookies if they're available so boosts are very useful from from rounds five to the buys so i would save at least one for that or well, make sure you have at least four over that period so ideally no boosts but if you need to use one do that but hopefully don't use two because you're going to need them for upgrades anyway that's all from me thank you for watching and any questions you have in the comments i'll try and get to so thanks for watching and we'll see you guys soon